Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. Mm. Wow, I'll tell you what. Thank goodness it's Friday and that we have the weekend to look forward to because, guys, the wide world is reaching a new level of crazy. I kid you not. An article that I was reading today, and this is coming out of the UK, but don't worry, it's going to make its way onto our shores if it hasn't already, and I'm sure other people are following it to see just how it's going to go down. But it's a new energy bill, and it's a proposed energy bill. It's going in, I think, for its third reading or something to that effect, so it could become law. But the deal is this. They really, they want to absolutely jail business owners and homeowners in this new energy bill if they don't ha if they don't go out there and you know in an expedient way install all these smart meters and all this kind of stuff that you know if you don't do it you could face a year by mind you not just like 30 days one year in jail or a fifteen thousand dollar fine and it's only to actually pursue the governments or some folks in the government's agenda for this whole, you know, net zero regs and all that. And guys, the thing that makes me so steamed when I hear this kind of stuff is this is not good governance. This is not representation for the people. This is not what the Westminster and what we would have here in the United States, these types of democracies where we elect folks to go in there and represent us as people and to put forth things that really help our society to function in a good way. No, what this is, is you got a bunch of lobbying groups out there that are pushing their own agenda down the throats of everybody else. And because they're not getting the big buy-in that they want with the carrot, you know what I mean, when they offered, oh, all the incentives and this and that, and we'll give you so much off your taxes if you install these things and da 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 So now they're not getting the biggest buy-in on that. And so what do they do? Now they're starting to pull out the stick. Okay, if you don't do it, we're gonna put you in, we're gonna throw you in jail. We're gonna fine you $15,000, 15,000 pounds, not dollars. It is absolutely obscene. And these politicians need to be run out literally on a rail for what they're putting their people through. It's truly obscene, especially when you're dealing with a major energy crisis and the cost of, you know, heating homes and things is just going up, 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 up up like that because of course what's going on over there in Europe and not being able to get you know cheap energy like they once could before this whole thing went down and now the, what they're doing is throwing this on the backs of the people it is just I'm telling you it's wrong on every level that's what it is and when you listen to these kind of agendas that they got planned for us, you know, their plan for the rest of us that, you know, 2030, you'll own nothing, you'll, and you'll be happy. Oh, you know, um, you know, most people shouldn't even be able to be allowed to own a vehicle because, well, they can't be responsible to use it in the way that they should, according to these people. Meanwhile, these same folks can jet set all around the world and go to Davos every year. And I'm telling you, what goes on there is truly obscene. When you actually see the, you know, the photos and stuff, we're not talking about the general council meetings when they come out and do all their spiels and that, but all these after hours parties and the absolute obscenity that goes on is truly immoral. And I'll tell you what, you know, the scripture has in Psalm 1, and I share this sometimes in my in my coaching sessions and stuff like that. But Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in what? The counsel of the ungodly. I mean, whether you're a believer or not, who wants to take advice from someone who's cheating on their wife, cheating on their taxes, cheat, 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 all this kind of stuff, stabbing their friends in the back and on and on and on. But these are the guys that want to come out. They live some of the most immoral lives that you can imagine. Yet they want to dictate to us about what morality is and how we should actually be living in the wide world. And then they're pushing it on us to the point where they're saying, okay, now that we're in power, you don't do as we say. Well, I'll tell you what, you're going to find yourself locked up in jail. It is absolutely absolutely obscene it gets on i'm telling you this it, they are pushing people to the absolute brink and i'll tell you something else gerald salante has a saying and i actually like it a lot and i like i've listened to gerald uh, you know for a number a number of years haven't really followed up on him for a whole lot in the last few months or so but i'll tell you what gerald salante says this when people lose everything 
they lose it. I'm telling you, they are pushing people to the absolute brink. And eventually you are going to see some reaction. And then they're going to use that reaction as a justification to, you know, oh, well, we got to come down hard. And, you know, they want all this kind of, but come on, what a load of hogwash. You are just pushing people to their absolute brink. It defies even common sense. That's what it does. I'm telling you. There is no evidence whatsoever that these things need to be pushed down people's throats the way they are. Remember when they came out with the whole this down there and how they were, you know, trying to incentive. Hey, they were taking 12 year olds and offering them ice cream cones to go in and get it outside of their parents' knowledge and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, bribing other people. Remember where they were have lotteries and people could win a prize? I think one of them was even so high as that, hey, you know, if you went down and you filled out that ticket, maybe you could win a million bucks and on and on and on. And when that didn't, you know, get all the compliance that they wanted, well, then what did they do? Well, they started, you know, the fear campaign, of course. And then when that didn't fully work with everybody, well, then what did they do? Well, if you, you know, they took away way people's I, I remember in, in up in Canada and the US here you know they were uh, a lot of people weren't taking it and uh, and they were going to the liquor store and this and that so they made it so you couldn't even go to the liquor store and buy your beer or stuff like that well then a lot of people say well I can't live without my beer I better go you know do what I got to do to get that and so they just pulled everything out of the book until literally they made it so you couldn't fly you couldn't take the train you couldn't a uh, brick they hardly could take a bicycle and if you were walking down the street and you know you didn't have something over here you know they were on your case like a fly on poop and this is the kind of way these tyrants work as far as i'm concerned that's exactly what they are guys i don't know how much play this one's gonna get but i'll tell you what i just had to come out and say it because it's just getting beyond ridiculous i mean it's a new level of crazy when they're putting this stuff out there and i'm telling you what when you take think of these countries over there remember how battered you know the uk was after world war ii and you had an entire generation of total industry i mean you have got to give these european countries credit they built themselves up right out of the rubble and i'm telling you a lot of these people that fought for that freedom would be rolling over in their graves to see what has become of the countries that they fought and so bravely died for i'll tell you what it gets right under my nerve mm. And I'll tell you something, that's not easy to do. <laughs> I am not so easily angered, I'll tell you. I used to be, you know, maybe I get triggered a lot more on other things, but I've learned in life, and guys, we all have to do, it's they make it like water off a duck's back in most cases, right? Because it's it's just not worth the energy to go through of it. And furthermore, some people just love the, uh, the fight. You know, they're in there for the fight. They're in there for the argument. They don't care what the end result is because the joy for them is the conflict. It's not the resolution. They're not looking to resolve it. They're looking to scrap it out. There are people out there that that is exactly what they're living for. You know, you see them in the comments. They'll say an antagonist things only to get a reaction and it floats their boat for some reason it's almost like an addiction to them it has it, it doesn't even matter what the issue is they just like the like the argument and so of course you know you know you're better off not to give it to them I mean, even the fool even the the scripture says hey look it's you know it's it's kind of you know in, in a way it's dangerous to kind of you know argue with a fool right because it, it's just it's it's crazy guys i'll tell you the world is changing fast and that's why we have to keep our own sense about us no have a constitution inside ourselves what's right what's wrong why why is it black and white like that and there are absolutes the truth has you know i'll tell you what the truth is not a variable is it you know, it's not something that, you know, you can just, oh, well, you know, well, you know, this is truth today, but it failed to be truth. Two plus two is going to be two plus two equals four, you know, from now till, you know, Jesus comes, it's always going to be four. But of course, you know, if you try to make truth relative, then it becomes circumstantial. What do they call that? You know, situational ethics. Come on, guys. There's no real such thing. It's not ethical at all. It's not a situational. Well, in this situation, I mean, give me a break. Carve out character in your life. I'm going to tell you what. 
It's something that you, it's a gift you give for yourself and nobody can take that from you. No one can take it from you and you're the one that gets to decide. And I'll tell you what, character is one of those things that is very wanting in the world today where a person is as good as their word. Remember that? Remember when you could put your hand to it, shake on it, and it was as done a deal as if you put and signed it with your name on the paper? That doesn't hardly exist anymore. Do we really trust one another? No, we don't. And that's why we've got you know, technology doing it for us and we call it a trustless system because we don't have to trust one another. We end up trusting the technology in a way that's a very sad commentary to be sure because gone are the days where you can look someone in the eye and genuinely know what's in their spirit and, and trust that they're going to keep their word and walk away with full confidence. Nowadays, people barely even trust that you're going to do what you say you're going to do because most people don't, guys, unfortunately. That's the way it is. And you know what the scripture says? A righteous man keeps his word even when it hurts. And that's something that, you know, we've got to be able to do. And why is that? Because they hold their integrity above their comfort. That's why integrity matters. Guys, be men and women. Nobility is not something people are born with. I don't care what family bloodline they come from. Nobility isn't something somebody's born with. It's something that someone cultivates. That's what it is. And I'll tell you what, you guys out there, in my estimation, you come from a royal priesthood. The scripture literally says, for those of us that follow Christ in this way, that we come from a line of priests and kings, a royal priesthood. Guys, that's reality. You can be that. You can be that. Don't let anyone tell you that you cannot live above the level of your circumstance and walk like a king in the midst of all that chaos and a queen because you sure can. That's at least my encouragement. I'll tell you what. Guys, I hope you're going to have a fantastic weekend spending it with your friends and your family and all that kind of stuff. And for those of you that are out there working on the weekend, thank you for doing it and keeping the engine of this economy going for us. I'll tell you what, I genuinely appreciate you for doing it. And I'll tell you, when you get those times to spend with your family, enjoy it to the max. Absolutely. Well, guys, until later on today, when we have a fabulous video for you, I sure hope you have a great one. And and take care.